In this video, we're going to briefly talk about what guards are in the NestJS framework. As you can see, guards really have a single responsibility. It's really to protect the underlying routes based on some kind of logic. So for example, authentication and authorization, perhaps you want to protect an endpoint to make sure that a user is already logged in before they can use that. Or maybe you're trying to protect an endpoint to make sure that only a specific type of user can use that. Like maybe an admin can only change a specific setting. That's what guards are for. So going back in our code, remember we've been building a ninjas API to manage an army of ninjas. Perhaps that we want to protect this specific route of creating ninjas. Let's maybe say that, I don't know, you have to have a black belt to be able to create a new ninja, right? To be able to manage ninjas, you have to be, you know, the greatest ninja of them all, kind of like Sean, right? So you got to have a black belt. So here's what we're going to do back in the terminal. We're going to do nest G guard. And maybe let's just call this belt. And you can see that this creates a belt guard in its own folder. We probably could move this into the ninja folder as well, but let's keep it here for now. And let's see what happens here. You can see that a guard is really, again, just another class with a injectable, kind of like a provider, but it very specifically implements the can activate interface. And you can see that the interface simply returns a true or a false. So the core idea behind guards is that you can attach a guard either to an entire controller or to individual methods in that controller. So for example, you can do something like this, use guards and then provide your guard in there. In our case, we have a belt guard, right? So you can have a guard in front of an entire controller, which means that it's going to sit in front of all of the underlying routes in here. So if you're trying to protect all of the ninja routes, you can do that. Or you can also move this into individual routes. For example, we said that we want to protect the ability to create a ninja. So we'll move the use guards into our create ninja method here. And if we go back to our application here on post 3000 slash ninjas, we should be able to still, you know, create a ninjas just like before. But if we go into our guard, let's see what happens when we change this to a false. Hit send. And now it's saying that it's forbidden, right? So at a high level, it's pretty simple. You just need to be able to toggle the Boolean that you're passing in here to true or false based on a specified logic. So you can see that we're passing in the execution context here. And typically what you would want to do is uh, parse the request out of that context. Right, so that request includes everything about the incoming request, like the URL and uh, what cookies it might have. And you can use that request to basically validate to tell if you should allow this request to move forward or not. Right, so for example, let's imagine that as part of this request, we're getting back uh, the user session, and the user session determines, uh, you know, what kind of user is that? What kind of belt do they have? So maybe you do something like request dot user dot belts dot includes black, right? Obviously we didn't implement this. This is kind of just pseudo code, but then, you know, you can return true or false based on that, which is effectively going to protect this route for you based on whether or not that user has a black belt, right? So again, it has a single purpose of basically allowing something to uh, move forward or not based on the logic that happens within can activate. So again, you think of use cases like authentication. You need, maybe you want to check is a user logged in. And again, for authorization, this would be an example of authorization where we're saying you have to have an authorized user to move forward. So that's really guards at a super high level. Obviously, implementing the logic in between here for a real application is much more complex than we're showing here. But this is just introducing to you the concept. So that pretty much wraps up our crash course for NestJS here. We learned quite a bit of stuff. We built a simple CRUD API. If you're trying to figure out where to go from here with this video, perhaps you want to learn more, I highly recommend uh, two things. One, go to the documentation of NestJS. It's actually very well written, in my opinion. There's a lot more things to learn here. So I highly recommend you, you check out everything that the framework has to offer. Now, the second thing is actually a quick plug for my channel, which is pretty small, but I've got quite a bit of 
uh, videos there, especially for Nest.js, if that's something that you want to dive deeper into. Uh, I cover some of the more complex topics like authentication. And then I do have other videos on other topics like front end, React, Vue, uh, Remix, GraphQL, all that fun stuff. Anyways, that's it for me today. Thanks for watching and special thanks to Sean, the Net Ninja, for having me on the channel. Anyways, hope you guys have a great day.